Hallelujah. I hope you praise the Lord with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you're ready to receive the meat of this sermon. If you're catching this online on YouTube, um, I want to review briefly for the people online on Jesus Saves. I apologize, but I'm going to review for them because I do just put up the sermon portion. So I want to go over that briefly here. So I'm talking about repent and be saved. That's the topic today. Amen. I went over Matthew 4, 17, where it says this, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the first thing he spoke in the book of Mark and Matthew was repent. That was the main calling. You know, that was his, that was his, that's part of the gospel. That's what he spoke to people. He came to call the sinners to repentance. Amen. Not to the righteous. Right. So then I spoke about briefly the most common translation of repent is turn or return. Two requisites of repentance included are to turn from evil and to turn to the good. Most critical is the idea of returning to God or turning away from evil. If one turns away from God, apostasy is indicated. Well, three times Ezekiel spoke in the Old Testament to the Israelites on repenting. He said, repent, repent turn from your idols, and renounce all your detestable practices. Repent, turn away from all your offenses, and repent, uh, turn, turn from your evil ways. And that was the call of all the prophets, right? They spoke repentance. That's what they did, and John the Baptist did it. Jesus did it right? It is a requirement to be saved by Christ. So confession of sins is both commanded and frequently illustrated, as I just told you, right? One, when one is guilty of various sins, he must confess in what way he has sinned in order to receive atonement and forgiveness from God. The scriptures are very clear about that. Thus, confession belongs to repentance and is needed for divine forgiveness. A great prophecy or promise is given in the book of Isaiah. The Redeemer will come to Zion to those in Jacob who repent of their sins. Right? The Redeemer will come. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is that Redeemer. In the New Testament, the key term for repentance is metonia. It has two, um, it has two usual senses, a change of mind and regret or remorse. In both books of Mark and Matthew, as already stated, Jesus says, repent, right at the very beginning of his gospel. Paul talked about it. He spoke repentance, right? But part of repentance is changing your mind not to sin anymore, you know, and have regret or remorse. You should. If not, I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's true repentance if you don't have that regret or remorse, if you're not sorrowful for what you did in the past. You know, and if you're a Christian, you've been a Christian for decades and you backslidden, if you went back to sin, repent and have remorse. My gosh. You know, repent and be saved is the topic of this today. You know, you are a new creation in Christ if you believe in him. If you're not a believer after a day, I hope you are. True repentance leads a person to say, I have sinned and prove it with a 180 degree change of their direction. Matthew 21, 32 says this, For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believed him. And when you saw it, you did not afterward relent to believe him. Who is he speaking to? The Pharisees, the scribes, the religious leaders of the day, because they thought they were already righteous because of pride. And I'll discuss that later. He called tax collectors and harlots. John did, as did Christ, right? But those tax collectors and harlots wanted to turn, and they did turn, right? They knew they were in error. Amen? Repentance is an honest, regretful acknowledgement of sin with commitment to change. Let's look at some other scriptures here. Luke 19, 1 through 10. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, who are they? Those Pharisees and scribes again, the people that thought they were righteous. They all complained, saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, 
Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he is he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. So who was Zacchaeus? He was a tax collector. They were known for being corrupt in that day. Kind of like the politicians today in the United States. You know, they were, uh, not all of them, but, you know, hey, a lot of them. So uh, he was a tax collector of the day. Lawyers and tax collectors were looked at as, you know, corrupt individuals. They were looked down on by society as, you know, kind of like today, obviously. And at one time, I believe he was a sinner. And he probably did steal from the poor. That's why he said that he what does what? He returns everything now fourfold. He gives to the poor now. He was repentant, basically, right? He had acknowledged, right, that he had sinned in the past, and he had was committed to changing himself. That's the whole purpose of this particular scripture. He desired to change, and Jesus came to save him. Repentance is not asking the Lord for forgiveness with the intent to sin again. Luke 17, 3, take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, in other words, straighten him out, speak to him about his sin, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. So this scripture has twofold here. I'm talking about forgiving the sinner here, right? Repentance is not asking the Lord for forgiveness with the intent to sin again. So, you know, whenever we repent, we are to not sin again. So this scripture, it, it talks about you forgiving those people, amen, and we're supposed to forgive everyone, but obviously it also talks about a person who sins again and repents, sins again and repents. Ideally, that's not what we're supposed to do, but the point is this, we're to forgive them, and God's going to forgive them as, as long as they're striving to do that, right? You should be striving to not sin any longer. If you slip up, get on your hands and knees and ask forgiveness from the Lord. Confess it to a brother if you have to, right? Another scripture is this when it comes to this topic, John 5:14. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. And this is the man who went, who was at the pool uh, where the angel came and stirred up the water, and the first person in the pool was healed miraculously. And this particular man was healed uh, by Jesus. He didn't even get into the pool. Jesus healed him. And then Jesus went and found him later on in the temple. And this is what he spoke to him. See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. And Jesus spoke this more than once to individuals, right? Who he healed, who were sinning. He told them, go forth and sin no more. Well, why? Because something worse can come upon you. You know, we're not to go back to sinful ways, brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you have, get down on your hands and knees. Ask forgiveness, repent, and turn. Don't do it any longer. So I went over several things here. True repentance leads a person to say, I have sinned, and prove it with a 180 degree change of their direction. Repentance also is an honest, regretful acknowledgement of sin with commitment to change. Repentance is not asking the Lord for forgiveness with the intent to sin again. Also, repentance leads us to cultivate godliness while eradicating habits that lead into sin. What habits lead you into sin? Think about that. I'm going to give you a scripture here, Luke 5. 31 and 32, Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So, that's who he's called. To, that's who he came to call. Sinners to repentance, right? We were all sinners. In the book of Romans, it says, All have fallen short of the glory of God, right? Everybody's sin, in other words. Amen? We need that physician. We were sick and dead in our sins, amen? It should be cultivating godliness now, eradicating bad habits, right? Repentance also requ requires true brokenness. 2 Corinthians 7, 9, and 10 says this, Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance, Paul says. For you were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. Verse 10, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. So, that's part of brokenness, being sorrowful before the Lord. Amen? I never will forget, you know, when I finally 
I, you know, when I truly repented of the Lord, I was in tears before him about my sins in the past. And I hope you have been too. If not, maybe your salvation is just in the mind and lip service and you haven't truly repented in your heart to the Lord yet. And you need to get down on your hands and knees and go before him, you know, in sorrow. What are some things that keep people from repenting, from truly repenting, from truly turning from sin? It's not just, you know, admitting you're a sinner. It's turning. It's changing. It's walking in holiness and righteousness. That's a repentant person. Well, the first thing is stubbornness. Keeps people from repenting or turning from sin. Romans 2, 4, and 5 says this. Or do you... Show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance, but because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. It's pretty black and white right there. Do you have a stubborn, unrepentant heart? Do you know somebody who has a stubborn, unrepentant heart? They're storing up wrath for the day of judgment. You know, God in his kindness, forbearance, and patience, patienceness has poured out all this kindness to you, made a way for you to come to him through Christ's salvation in the cross, amen, for him going to the cross and dying for our sins. Yet some people are so stubborn, they don't want to repent. They want to keep doing things they shouldn't do. They want to keep lusting. They want to keep walking in anger. They want to keep doing drugs or drinking too much, being a drunkard. They want to keep thieving from people. They want to keep, you know, the list could go on and on here. I mean, I'm not going to list all types of sins, but coveting things, idolatry. I mean, the list goes on and on. What's another thing that can keep people from repenting? Pride. Obviously, right? Luke. 10, excuse me, Luke 18, 9 through 14. Also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And that tax And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Are you too proud to admit you're a sinner? Are you too proud to get before God, lay down on your knees, and say, I'm sorry, Father? Are you too proud to confess your sins to another brother or sister in the Lord? You don't want to be like that Pharisee. Because the Lord's going to humble you. And that's not going to be fun. There's all kinds of scripture that talks about how God does not like the proud. Another thing that keeps people from repenting and turning from sin are lusts of the flesh. Galatians 5.17 says this, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. You know, you want to be holy and righteous? you got to crucify that flesh. You can't walk in agreement with it, because it's at enmity. It's at war with the spirit. The flesh and all of its deeds are unfilthy and unclean. The flesh is... You know, your flesh was born in sin. It's been that way ever since Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. It's just a fact of life. So crucify that flesh. Fast if you need to. Turn your flesh over to the Lord. Don't walk in agreement with it. Amen? And repent from the deeds of the flesh. Turn from them. It's difficult. But it can be done through Christ and only through him. Amen. Luke 24, 46 through 48 says this. 
Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and you and I are witnesses of these things. Amen. Hallelujah. We are witnesses of these things. We are to preach repentance and remission of sins to everyone, to all nations. Amen? Don't just preach the good news that Jesus Christ came to save you from your sins and you can only go to heaven by believing on him. You must preach to that person, repent, turn from sin, sin no more, and be saved. Are you a believer in Christ? Hopefully you're walking in repentance. You've turned from sin completely and you're walking in holiness and righteousness. And if not, I implore you, to desire to do that, to get down on your hands and knees and go before the Lord in sorrow and ask forgiveness and turn and don't sin anymore. You know, you may have temptations. The flesh is going to tempt you. The devil may tempt you. God's not going to tempt you, though. And God makes a way out, it says in the scripture, of every temptation. So we are guilty if we sin. Amen? All right. And if you don't believe in Christ after today, I hope you do, because no one has not sinned on this earth. And there's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He came and died on a cross for your sins and my sins, shed his blood and created a new covenant for mankind to be saved. After he died for three days, he was in the grave, rose again, was seated in the heavenly realms, now a Father God, and he's coming again to judge the living and the dead. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Father's Son who did all those things, accept him as your Lord and Savior today. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask forgiveness. Jesus, I ask forgiveness for my sins. I believe that you died on that cross for me, and I want to be saved from my sins. I repent, I turn, I ask forgiveness for everything I've done, and ask that you speak this from your heart, not your mind. I want to be forgiven for my sins in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus, come into my life now. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I want to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, I accept you. I believe that you died on that cross for me. If that's you, hallelujah, hallelujah. Speak it out loud and you will be saved. Turn from sin. Now, there's more on your walk. You need to be baptized in water. And that's an outward proclamation of you becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. I think it's very important for every believer to be baptized by water once they believe, once they've repented. That's what they did in the Old Testament. That's what Christ did. He gave us an example. He said to baptize. Amen. Don't delay that. Get baptized and be saved. Well, let's take communion. There's power in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, and I like to take communion every week here at this church service. Take it throughout the week with your family, with your brothers and sisters in the Lord. If you have a Bible study, remember what Jesus did for you. So if you would, gather up your supplies and I'll bless them. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ's name, every piece of bread out there becomes a body of Jesus cleansed in Jesus' name. Every cup becomes the blood of Jesus Christ right now. With that last supper, before Jesus Christ went to that cross, cross, he wanted to have that last supper with his disciples. And there was some bread there, and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we remember that Christ went to the cross for us and died for our sins as we eat this bread. So take, eat of the body of Jesus now. When the supper was ended, he took a cup and he said, This is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant shed for the sins of many. The only way to go to heaven and go to the Father is through Jesus Christ shed blood on the cross for you and my sins. So drink now the blood of Jesus. Well, let's worship the Lord with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. You know, if you just came to the Lord, 
continue to pour out to him how sorry you are for being a sinner of the past. If you're a backslidden Christian through this psalm music, you can do the same thing and be risen up by Christ again, be seated with him again. So worship the Lord, and I'll be back with that with active prayer, however the Lord leads me.